Good morning, brothers and sisters. Today is February the 26th of 2020. Um, I hope everybody's good. I'm just coming to you guys to give you um, a message that I have been given. It's in regards to the coronavirus, a word that Father has given me. And um, it's you know a single word that Father has given me. And it is in regards to coronavirus because he gave me confirmation of it. And um, I don't know if you all are paying attention, but I pray that you all are reading your Bibles because Revelation 6 is unfolding. The horsemen, the four horsemen of the apocalypse, this thing is happening. We are, this is really surreal right now. And I hope you understand the dangers of this virus um, and, and what... It, Oh, I, I pray that you guys are doing your research, um, that you're paying attention to what's happening. And before I go any further, let me just say this video is not um, to instill fear in anyone. It is not any um, any intention of fear mongering. That's not what we're here to do as watchmen. But we do have to sound the alarm. And toward the end of this video, I will share with you what I was given as far as the watchmen um, sounding the alarm and warning father's children. But this is hopefully to light a fire under Father's children so we can begin to prepare and take this thing serious so we can know where we are in time. Because this, 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 is, um, this is very dangerous, guys. And, and like, let me just pray and plead the blood of Christ, Yahushua HaMashiach, over this video and over my, my brothers and sisters, over my family, over myself. Um, as in Psalm 91, it says, we shall not... I shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand shall fall at our side and ten thousand at our right hand, but it shall not come nigh unto us. I speak and I declare this over myself, over my brothers and sisters in Christ, and over each and every one of us, everybody connected to us. I just plead the blood of Christ. I just plead the blood of Christ as protection over us, that we shall not be harmed or touched by this. We are sealed and marked by the Most High Father. Um, prayer and the word is our weapon. But Father is wanting us to do our due diligence and prepare, brothers and sisters. We have to prepare. We have to prepare. Now, just to get right into this message, um, um, my dear sister in Christ, Sister Poli, um, her YouTube channel is Yahushua Servant. She received um, a message about a dirty bomb in Seattle, and it was pertaining to aerosol and this coronavirus, which means um, something in regards to them putting the virus in a bomb. And then if that bomb explodes, brothers and sisters, and knowing that the coronavirus is airborne, it's going to be, it's already widespread. They're not telling us the true numbers, the uh, statistics. They are not putting the true information out there, okay? We have to do our due diligence and look for this stuff so we can understand where we are. Um, but if they do something like this, this is going to be exposure to millions of people, okay? And... Um, after listening to her video, um, the same day on my way home from work, I was not thinking about this at that time. I was in the car with my children. I just happened to look over to my left on the opposite side of the highway, and there was a truck passing by with the word hazmat written on it. It was a white truck with red letters that got my attention, and I immediately in my spirit thought about her word that she had been given. OK, and so I prayed uh, on this and asked if it was in regards to coronavirus. And I asked Father to send me confirmation as to whether or not he wanted me to speak this to his people. So um, what I did when I got home, I went to go look up the word hazmat, because even if I think I know what something means, I still go and look up the definition so I can understand the entirety of the message that Father is trying to give to me. And it reads here, as you can see, a material or substance that poses danger to life, property, or the environment if improperly stored, shipped, or handled. Regulations for transporting radioactive materials and other hazmat. Okay, that um, stirred my spirit because there's all there's just so much going on with this virus and so much information, so many things not being told, right? 
Um, and so as I go on with my life, brothers and sisters, um, father just, he just keeps confirming. He just keeps on confirming that this thing is more serious than what we understand. If you don't know already that this virus is being used as biological warfare, okay, is, is, is being put out there purposely to, for the means of depopulation. Okay. This is what it's for. They're trying to um, rid the masses. Something has to happen to cause mass panic and chaos. And all this falls in line with the plans of the elitists, the Satanists, those spiritual, the people that are in high places, the spiritual wickedness in high places is what they are. And they're being controlled by demonic forces. This is all for Satan's plan to bring in the Antichrist and this new world order, the one world government, all of this is part of the plan, brothers and sisters. I hope you are paying attention. If you don't know what biological warfare is, I just screenshotted the definition right here so you can see, you know, the use of toxins of biological origin or micro microorganisms as a weapons, as weapons of war. And as confirmation of this, let me tell you how father works. Like I said, I was going on about my life. Um, two days after I had seen the word hazmat, I was headed to pick up my children from school. This truck that you see on the screen, three of these trucks passed me in a row. One, two, three. What caught my eye, first of all, is the color red. That's urgency. That's the warning. That's the, uh, the siren going off for me. Okay. But not only that, I'm going to zoom in on this picture. Do you see that there are four horses on this truck? Look closely because there's four horses there on the side of that truck. What I understood in my spirit, this has everything to do with the four horsemen of Revelation 6, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Famine, death, war, and pestilence. Please read your Bibles, brothers and sisters. I hope you're reading your Bibles. I hope you understand that this is not, this is not a, a drill. This is real. Okay, and we have to be in the word. We have to be knowing what's going on, right? We, as saints of, you know, the most high, as children of the most high, we have to be alert and awake in understanding what's happening. All right. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. It's in Revelation six verses one through eight. So moving on yesterday as more confirmation that this thing is deadly and, and is it's like I said, it's way worse than what they're telling us. They are not giving us the 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 full um, they're not giving us all the information that we are supposed to know about this. Okay. For, and it's, it's, it's being done purposely brothers and sisters. I was on my way home. This is a real picture right here. I, this truck passed me yesterday on my way home. What got my attention is the three men in hazmat suits. I had prayed and asked the father to give me the word hazmat again so that I know he wanted me to publicly share with his people. Right. Do you see the hazmat suits? The picture is not very clear, but what I did, I didn't even, I don't even know this company didn't know it existed. What I did is when I got home, cause I knew this was a confirmation. I looked up the company. Look at this brothers and sisters. Look what they make hazmat suits for biohazard material, chemical suits. They have on gas masks. OK, this is something this is serious. This is the red. The, your, your sirens should be going off right now. Father is wanting us to prepare for this stuff that is coming. If you don't understand how to prepare. Um, and, and really, we're kind of in a red zone with, with with masks and stuff like that. If you can get masks, please get you some masks like regular medical masks. Um, N95 masks are good as well. They're, they're better than the regular mask because they um, keep you from breathing in uh, hazardous uh, toxins and chemicals. The fumes from this stuff, they, they it filters this stuff from getting in your system. But I went to Lowe's and Home Depot the other day trying to find some N95 masks. And they told me, the, the people that work in the store, they told me that they are completely out. They've been bought out by customers. But not only that, whatever shipment they get is being shipped to China and the manufacturers can't keep up. So they don't even know when they will get more masks in. 
This is so serious, guys. I pray that you are really reading your Bibles and cleaving to the Most High Father. If you have not submitted yourself to Christ, I pray that you do so. Because he is our protection. He's our place of refuge. He's our high tower. He's the one that's going to keep us where we need to be. Okay. Um, I pray that you are stocking up on water. Please get water. Water. Um, f- f- non-perishable foods. And I tell people all the time when they ask me, you know, what kind of stuff should we get? Think about what you would need if you were living outside. If you had to survive outside, what kind of stuff would you need? Flashlight batteries, because this is where the famine comes in. It's already taking place with the masks and stuff. And if you don't understand, a lot of our stuff comes from China. And a lot of stuff is being shut down because of this virus. Things cannot come in and out. That is in scripture. It is in scripture. It's in Revelation, guys. Um, And as far as... As far as the watchmen, this is something else that Father put in my spirit to share here. Um, If you don't understand why people are, if you get afraid when you hear these messages, you have to understand that this is the Father. He's given this this information to his children to share with those who are lost, to share with those who are not awake, even those who are awake, to warn the people. Because he does not do anything before he tells his servants he doesn't do anything he doesn't allow anything to happen until he tells his servants first and then as a watchman we have an obligation to take care of his children and to feed his sheep and if we don't do that we are penalized for that there are consequences for not doing what he asks you to do when he gives you a word and I've been led to share this in scripture starting in Ezekiel chapter 3 I was given this because I've been seeing 333 everywhere and for my personal confirmation when I first began to see 333 a lot of times father gives me the understanding that it's Jeremiah 33 and 3 where I need to call out to him I need to to come unto him for something this was different he put Ezekiel chapter 3 and Ezekiel chapter 33 in my spirit and they they say the same thing I'm going to read them here and then I will end the video okay but this is for you to understand how important it is for us as watchmen to feed father's sheep and be obedient when he gives us a word and for you to take heed to the warning, you know? And this is what happens when we, you know, when we are obedient and we, when we are disobedient, we won't do it when we don't do what he asks us to do. Okay. And it says, uh, starting at verse 17, chapter three in Ezekiel, it says, son of man, I have made thee a watchman into the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. That's Father telling us right there in his words that if he gives us a message to deliver to the wicked, or in in general, if he gives us a message to warn the people and we don't do it, to save them. They're going to die in their iniquity, but their blood is going to be on our hands. Okay, it says, yet if thou warn the wicked and he turn not from his wickedness, nor his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul by us being obedient and speaking and declaring what father has given. We are delivering ourselves from punishment. Okay, and that person's blood is that we are not responsible for the death of that person or those people. It says again, the same thing for a righteous man. When a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin and his righteousness, which he hath done, shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Same thing, brothers and sisters. Says, Nevertheless, if thou won the righteous man and the righteous man sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live because he is warned and thou hast delivered thy soul. Now, the next scripture is Ezekiel chapter 33. Same thing. Please listen. It says again. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, son of man, speak to the children of thy people and say unto them, when I bring the sword upon the land, if the people of the land take a man of their coasts 
and set him for their watchmen. If when he seeth the sword coming upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. That's saying that when the watchman gets the message and he sees the sword coming and he tells the people, but the people don't listen. The, the, the blood of the people is going to be upon themselves, not the messenger. Okay. It says he heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. When you take heed to the messages that are being given to you from the most high father, you are delivering yourself from harm. <laughs> Verse six says, but if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at the watchman's hand. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, shalt, excuse me, thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way. That wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. This is why it's important for us as watchmen to feed his sheep and for each and every person that hears the message to take it directly to prayer for your own confirmation so you can begin to take heed because this is what is happening right now as in the body of Christ. We should um, we should be sharing and, and doing whatever the Mo Most High Father is telling us to do. We should be feeding his sheep and giving whatever warning he's given us permission to speak publicly and openly. And we should do it boldly. It doesn't matter about our reputation. It doesn't matter about um, what people are going to think about what we're doing. It's not in any boasting. It is not of any loftiness and highness about what we're receiving. It's out of pure obedience because when we don't, we're penalized for it and we're responsible for the people that don't know. Brothers and sisters, I pray that you will take this word and everything spoken, all scripture, all messages to the Most High Father. Please pray to him first and foremost. As soon as you are done listening to any word, go and pray. And ask him for your own confirmation. Ask him to help you understand. Ask him if it's real. And ask him for direction and guidance on what you need to do. Please repent of your sins today and allow Christ into your life. Allow him to be your place of refuge, to be your savior, to be your guide. You need him. We need him. That he is the only way we're going to make it through this time. Because if you are not spiritually awakened right now. Oh my goodness, it's such a perilous time, all right? But at the same time, I pray that you are comforted in Christ because he already said that we are gonna, we're sealed and we're marked and we're going to be protected. We just have to draw nigh unto him, draw nigh unto him. Please draw nigh unto him. Um, that's all I have for you, brothers and sisters. I pray that you are, uh, that you all are, aware and alert and that you begin to do what you can to prepare prepare your households tell your families how serious this is please do not disregard any messages or any warnings please don't take the coronavirus lightly because like i said we're not being told the whole truth i pray that this has uh, blessed you in some way not instill fear but to bless you to uh, move forward and hastily in Yahushua HaMashiach's holy name I pray. Amen.